in his place, uh, Claudio Oriani has gracefully uh, volunteered uh, to fill in uh, that spot. And uh, Claudio will talk to us about planetary image processing. Um, so if Claudio, you're ready, uh, over to you. Hi guys, thank you Paul for having me tonight. Um, tonight I'm going to speak about planetary imaging. and specifically how to get from A, the video on the left, to B, the processed image on the right. And I will try to explain my recipe on how to get from A to B. So fasten your bells and let's get started. So first of all, what do you need to acquire planetary images? A telescope, a robust mount, a planetary camera, a laptop, an acquisition software, a stacking software, and image processing software. The good news is the planets are visible even in the light polluted area, so you don't have to go to Algonquin Park to watch the planet to get beautiful images. Uh, a planetary camera is my choice. There are also other options. So for example, you can also try with the um, eyepiece projection with the DSLR camera. You remove uh, the lens and you connect your body of the camera to the telescope. But this is my setup. So I have a schmidt cassegrain telescope is eight inches Celestron 8 with a motorized equatorial mount, a power supply, and a dew shield. You will need a dew shield when you're outside for three hours, because otherwise your lens will be not usable. And I'm using a planetary color ca astronomy camera, the ZWO ASI 224MC. I'm not endorsing any of the brands and models for the camera, telescope, software, and so on. Just my setup. I also know that the mono camera are usually performing better, but you will have to combine video second with the three different filters, red, green, and blue. And sometimes you don't have time to process all the images. And uh, above all, the signal, the transparency will change during your capturing sessions. You also need a very capable um, laptop with the space on your hard drive. Uh, an average two minutes video of Mars can be up to six gigabytes. And there are lots of uh, free software. Um, I'm personally using Fire Capture to capture the videos, stacking with auto stackers, and image processing, Registax, and then GIMP. I'm also having a folding table, a camping chair, also a blanket would be very useful to be outside for two or three hours. A bonus, I'm also using an atmospheric dispersion corrector when objects are very low to the horizon, like Jupiter and Saturn in the next few years, you can help combining the different colors that are um, diffracted differently. So the red, the green, and the blue can be better processed by the, your camera. And I'm also using a vibration suppression pad to reduce the vibration of my mount when I'm playing with the focusing and so on. There are other acquisition software I'm also using combined with the fire capture. Uh, there is Sharp Cap, and this is very useful because it's a useful focus assistant feature. Or also ASI Studio, but this last software is only working with the ZWO ASI cameras. Before starting your observation, and this is particularly true if you are working with the um, Schmidt Cassegrain of a um, Newtonian telescope, acclimatize your telescope. You need to set up your telescope at least, let's say, three for 45 minutes. Otherwise, uh, the temperature inside your telescope will not be balanced and your images will not be good. You also need a firm ground. Uh, for the most part of my time, I'm capturing images on my deck. This is not the best option, but as I say, the vibration suppression pad can help. 
And also when you try to focus, you're also moving your scope. And another important thing I want to highlight is that you have to align your telescope as much as you can. And also collimate if you have a Newtonian and a smith cassegrain grain. There are lots of tutorials around, but you need to collimate almost before every session, I would say, to get the best from your telescope. And then you are ready to go. So my recipe, focusing. It's very important to reach the best focus you can. Sharp cap has uh, an interesting function called focus assistant. You may need to refocus your um, lens and your telescope during the session because the temperature will drop, the transparency can change, and so on. Um, if you're using a sharp cap, you have to use a contrast edge detection or contrast brightness range detection or Fourier detail detection. You have to reach the tall green bars to have high values. If you are there, you're good to go. Then you have to connect your planetary camera to the laptop through a 3.0 USB port. You get to transfer the images from your camera to your computer as fast as you can. And then finally, you can start your lucky imaging program. High speed videos can effectively freeze some frames because we are in an atmosphere and this is moving the images. I would say that probably the best number of frames is uh, 2000 frames of above, depending on your transparency condition. And also the histogram, as we are going to see shortly, must be around 70%. You have to balance between the exposure time and the gain. Not to use a too aggressive gain because this will introduce background noise. It is a little bit difficult to, to remove post-processing. Basics of lucky imaging. First, you want to reach the long focal length. Usually F20 is a, a good number, but only when possible. Again, you have to check the transparency and you have to check the scene before using your Barlow lens. Try to use a good Barlow lens or even um, a Teleview. You have to mount your, you have to align your mount and track in the sidereal lunar or whatever is the best for the target you are capturing. Focus, high speed video, the formats are AVI or SER. And try to keep short exposure time to try to capture lucky frame. That's why the name is lucky imaging. Short exposure time is usually helping uh, removing the movement of our atmosphere. And then you have to select the best frames from your video for stacking. My experience says that usually 20 to 30% is the maximum number of frames you can try to process. But let's go to the process. So first of all, I'm launching the video capture program, Fire Capture. Then I select and stack the best 20, 30% frames with auto stacker. Adjust the wavelet to reveal lots of hidden data in image after they have been stacked with Registax. And then, if needed, final adjustments with GIMP. This is a, a good and free alternative to Photoshop. So I'm working with the levels, curves, sharpening, and noise. The good news is that all these software are free. With the file capture or shark cap, um, an interesting feature is uh, that you have to reduce the area you want to capture. You want to capture just around the planet. You don't want to have too much black background because you're just increasing the size of your video without adding any information. So you want to use the region of interest, ROI. 
try to change the exposure time and the gain to obtain values around 70% in the histogram. So increase the exposure time, reduce the gain, or vice versa. Select the auto align function so that the software will take care of keeping the image in the center of your video, a capture at least 2,000 frames at high speed, the maximum number of frames per second. I discovered after uh, probably one year of uh, capturing images that uh, you don't need gamma or debayer. If you are enabled debayer, you will see your image in color, but you are not adding any information. You're just increasing the size of your video. So the debayer on is only useful when you are to try to focus your image. But then remember to check out this option. Then you have your video, you load your video, A, A, B, or SER in AutoStacker. AutoStacker has just three steps. The first one, of course, you open your raw video. So you load your image, your video, is AVI or SER video, and uh, you just have this image on the right side of your auto stacker. Then you have to create the alignment points, but first you have to analyze your image. So what they are going to do is to click the button analyze and then wait until the software will show you a graph on the left side. Then you select the best frame and finally, you can decide to place your alignment point grid. Click here and then decide how many frames you want to stack. And then you are ready to go. Click stack button and you are stacking your image. Auto stack it will work on its own. You wait patiently. And then finally, you have this image that you open with Registacks. It will be a little bit blurry, but it is normal at this point. Don't worry, because this is when the magic happens. At this point, you have to use Registacks to work on the wavelets to sharpening your image. How? On the left side, you can change your configuration and uh, there are sliders six different layers in my experience i'm not using the first layer because it's a little bit too aggressive i'm starting using the second layer the third the fourth the five and there is no golden rule again depends on the scene or the transparency of this night so what you're going to do is to play with these sliders you can increase the sharpening you can increase the denoise and then finally you can play with the RGB alignment. And finally you save your image. Don't forget to press do all to see the result and then save your image in TIFF. And then you're ready to go with GIMP or if you have Photoshop, it's fine. I'm usually working just to enhance a little bit of the colors and work on the curves. Then with the levels, and finally, I'm announcing the sharpening. And finally, I have my image. There are different ways to capture your images. This is another option. I used to play with my DSLR camera and a telescope adapter. If you have a Canon, you have to order a Canon. If you have a Nikon, you have to order a Nikon T-ring. You need the eyepiece of your telescope and the tele extender for eyepiece projection. Uh, important, your DSLR must have a programmable self timer or remote shutter. Otherwise, the vibration you are inducing on your scope by just clicking, pressing the shutter release button will uh, destroy your image. And you can also, of course, uh, play with your smartphone. You can try to capture some images of the moon or the most brilliant planet with your smartphone, but you can process without a sucker. It just, you know, if you have an outreach, public outreach event, there are smartphone adapter 
I'm using the Celestron XYZ Universal Smartphone Adapter and it's working very well on the moon. And this is uh, some of my process images you can find on Flickr. So this is Mars on uh, September 21st. And you can uh, see some interesting feature of Mars. So you can see Solis Lacus, the so-called eye of Mars. The second one taken on October 3rd, the very prominent triangular dark area on the top of the area is uh, Sirtis Major. And is an albedo feature. The bright area below is uh, uh, Hellas Planitia, an ancient crater impact. By the way, all these names were um, created by an Italian astronomer, Schiaparelli, in the 19th century, using uh, you know, fancy classical Latin names. And the latest image just a couple of days ago, I do. You can see the top of bright area is a volcano, Elysium Mount, the fourth tallest volcano on Mars. It's a 12.7 kilometer tall. There are two dark forks below that are also visible, not far from the crater Gale, that is the landing site of the Mars rover Curiosity. Next. This is a, a, a image I'm very proud of. I was able to capture the two moons of Mars by using a fire capture plugin named Planetary Mass. I basically masked the bright disk of the planet. I increased the gain and the exposure time until the moons appeared on the video. And then, as usual, I processed the final video with Auto Stuckert, Peggy Stacks, a GIMP. Um, another thing before asking for a question, how I get, I got to this results in a little bit more than two years. I started planetary imaging about two years ago, uh, looking for other planetary imagers. And I would mention probably Daniel Peach, Christopher Go, and recently also Dylan O'Donnell, published a video about the planetary imaging and just how to use fire capture. And that's it for me. Fantastic. Thank you very much, uh, Claudio. Beautiful images of uh, Mars. And uh, for a moment, I thought you were showing us a photo of a solar eclipse, but uh, not so. Very <laughs> interesting. I hadn't seen that ever before, uh, you know, occulting uh, Mars to show the moons. Well done. Thanks again for stepping in and uh, filling in the, the void this evening with your presentation. Um, let's go over to Ennio. Any questions? Yeah, we have a question from Blake Nancaro. Why don't you use the stacking feature in WebStacks? That's a very good question. I found that uh, for my camera, the ASI 224MC, Fire capture is the software that is the best fit. I'm also trying to use the uh, proprietary software uh, provided by JWO, that is ASI Studio. But again, I found that the best results uh, I'm getting are with the fire capture. And by the way, fire capture has very interesting features. You can also auto align, you can also connect your focuser to fire capture. You can use your electronic focuser directly with fire capture. So you don't have to move to the telescope and going back. The question I have is on your Flickr page, do you have any examples of images you've captured and processed using a mobile phone? Uh, not yet, but I will publish them soon and I will also add some um, comment so that it will be available. By the way, I'd like to create my own website, astronomical website, but this requires time and uh, dedication. So probably stay tuned and uh, in a few months I hope to have a website when I'm explaining how I'm processing images. 
Looking forward to that, uh, Claudia. Thank you very much. Uh, any more questions for him? Nothing else, Anya? No other questions right now. Okay, very good.